Good morning, good afternoon and good evening to all denarians on the go and in the know. Like subscribe and share to help support the channel. First article of interest. Economist. We are facing a fatal crisis and reveals 54 trillion dinars in banks and individuals. The economic expert, Ala Alfad, described the current economic crisis in the country as a lethal, while revealing that there were 54 trillion dinars in banks and individuals. The government is currently studying several tools for the state's financial policy, including internal tools by trying to diversify revenues for other sectors and revitalize them, such as the industrial and agricultural sectors, and the participation of the private sector, which can contribute to providing the state and operating many stalled projects, Al Fod said. He added, there are several tools on the table of the government and parliament including the direction of revitalizing the private sector and supporting it to be a partner of the state, noting that the economic crisis due to the reduction of oil prices in Iraq is not a result of today, and in every drop we notice the government resorting to reducing expenditures. al Fad pointed out that this crisis is the most deadly in the Iraqi economy, especially its entry with the corona pandemic crisis which are multiple challenges that may pour end to financial and health catastrophes, so there should be revenue diversification and rationalization in spending, and this is what the International Fund report confirmed by having multiple jobs with more than 250,000 jobs and horizons can be pressured according to productivity, stressing the government's endeavor to work on this by adopting the 2020 budget law. He continued. All the solutions currently presented are immediate solutions, either resorting to internal or external loans by selling bonds or resorting to funds funds in addition to the trust accounts with the ministries, which have not been disposed of until now. Al Fad noted that, Finance Minister Ali Abdul Amir Alawi has experience in managing the financial file during previous years through which tools and alternatives can be found that contribute to supplying the budget, asking, are these solutions close to reality, especially since banks are mostly idle and the cash block is mostly at homes? He revealed the presence of 54 trillion Iraqi dinars, four of which are in banks and 50 among individuals and homes. How can the government withdraw this large cash block? What are the encouraging means to buy government bonds and lending? This is what the state's financial policy is currently looking at. Al Fad added. The government is currently working to close simple computers trust accounts, but our problem in Iraq is most of our operating expenses, not investment, and our dependence on oil mainly. He added, there are jobs lack and double wages. Radical solutions must be put in place. Most countries in the world, especially oil, have suffered from the crisis, but they have sovereign funds through which the deficit can be bridged returning to resort to withdrawing cash reserves from the central bank that will weaken the Iraqi currency. He concluded Fad his speech by saying, there are things that many are on the table, including savings mandatory for employees, pointing out that the withdrawal of funds frozen and smuggled out of the country file legal needs to raise claims and evidence and the timing of the long and the government is currently looking for quick solutions to get out of this crisis. Next article of interest. In the document, the central bank contributed to the escape of Iraqi money and the dissipation of its wealth. An economist called for reviewing the exchange documents of the Central Bank of Iraq, which are approved for importing various goods, and presenting them to the evidence, the forensic doctor, and experts to audit them, know their authenticity, and detect fraud and forgery in them. The expert who preferred not to be named at the present time, pointed out in an interview with Digital Media NRD today, May 29, 2020, that Iraq has witnessed significant import operations such as the private sector and with huge sums, showing that there is no real existence of the goods that it was dispersed for its sake, in addition to the fact that many of them are carried out with credits granted by forged documents indicating that this matter is done for the purpose of smuggling the currency. Experts and specialists called for reviewing the records and documents of the Central Bank of Iraq and their conformity with the reality of what was imported through border crossings and government methods, and a serious investigation into the issue of currency smuggling. 
A document obtained by digital media NRT shows that the Central Bank of Iraq spent several hundreds of billions of dollars to the private sector, between 2007 to 2018, to go to benefits that are not of real value, by importing goods that Iraq can dispense with many of them or reduce it to the maximum extent possible. And the consultant in industrial development and investment Samer al Jawahari confirms in a statement to Digital Media NRT that among the $9,556 billion that were mentioned in the document, the share of machines and equipment was $5,214 billion, while the import amount of drinks and cigarettes was $2.7 billion. Despite the high customs interest on it, Noting that many exchange lists may be listed in the lowest field in the customs calculation percentage. Al Jawahari called on the authorities that manage the economic file to pay more attention to the numbers that are shown in the document to benefit from them, and focus on the fact that the lists are real and reflect the country's need and not only cover the supplies calling on businessmen to open their credits in the country and that the future focus on supporting small projects by central bank. The document shows an ascending hierarchy in import numbers, contrary to what the market logic imposes on sufficiency, especially in durable goods, where the numbers have reached three or four times even in the years of austerity, as contained in the first two paragraphs related to food and animals, and the second two oils and fats, animal and vegetable, where the numbers of the importer in the second paragraph exceed what is imported in the previous ones. The document also shows the existence of floating and unspecified exchange doors that were included under names such as manufactured goods according to material and various manufacturers and goods and transactions not classified according to type. Followers indicated that the central bank is misleading and deceiving the state as the bank claims that it is financing private sector purchases. And these people wonder if all these purchases made by the private sector are necessary for the state. An economist asks, is there a sane person in the world who believes that the value of private sector purchases for Iraq is between 4, 4 to 5, 5 billion dollars a month? And why is it called a private sector if the National Central Bank finances its purchases in hard currency? He adds. The Central Bank of Iraq is in fact ordering the financing of private sector exports to other countries to Iraq, because the real Iraqi private sector, the profitable, efficient, and competing product, has completely ended as a result of the bank's wrong policy that led to support and encouragement of import and dumping the Iraqi market and making Iraq an economically low country product and commodity. The other. This indicates legal experts who digital media NRD their opinions that the law and if it is proven the default of the bank or deliberate or neglected, it holds officials responsible for wasting public money and mismanagement. Next article of interest. Digital Dollar Project lays out its plan for a U.S. digital currency. The Digital Dollar Project released a white paper for the proposed development of a U.S. The paper describes a tokenized dollar that lives alongside physical cash. Privacy concerns are handed off to the Fourth Amendment. The former chairman of the Commodity Futures Trading Commission believes the time is ripe for a U.S. digital dollar, and the project he initiated to achieve this and has now laid out its plan for a U.S. central bank digital currency. The Digital Dollar Project today released its first white paper for the proposed development of a U.S. The project is a partnership between the Digital Dollar Foundation and multinational consulting firm Accenture. Chris Giancarlo, who stepped down as chairman of the CFTC when his term ended in April 2019, co-founded the Digital Dollar Foundation earlier this year. The 50-page white paper proposes a U.S. digital dollar that coexists with physical cash. It outlines the benefits of a CBDC, spells out some use cases, and goes on to discuss pilots. Accenture is a lead architect in the project. And the paper points out that to prevent duplicate spends, its proposed digital dollar would make use of distributed ledger technology or DLT inspired systems, indicating that it will only be loosely associated with anything blockchain-y. Two-tiered system 
the paper proposes that a tokenized dollar follows the existing two-tiered distribution model of physical cash. In the current system, the Federal Reserve produces cash and distributes it to intermediary financial institutions, who then send it off to individuals and businesses, commercial banks, and potentially other regulated intermediaries with access to the Fed would exchange reserves for digital dollars to be distributed to end users much in the way they currently do when issuing physical cash to customers through ATMs, the paper said. Privacy Privacy is a big concern among those using any sort of digital payment system because it allows spendings to be easily tracked by Big Brother. After all, one of the advantages of cash is its anonymity. The paper weighs both sides of the equation but doesn't go into any great detail on how it will deal with the problem. It acknowledges that a completely anonymous system would allow for illicit activity. Meanwhile, nobody wants a completely transparent system in which their financial lives are exposed. Instead of offering a solution, the paper points to the Fourth Amendment, which clearly requires that seizures and searches of paper and effects must not be unreasonable thereby leaving the problem in the hands of the government. Financial inclusion. The project reiterates a promise that's popular with many digital currencies, including Facebook's proposed Libra project, financial inclusion for unbanked populations. According to the 2017 FDIC survey, roughly 14 million American adults lack a bank account. Lower system costs and digital wallets tied to the custody of tokenized digital dollars may hold advantages over traditional bank accounts in terms of expanding access to underserved populations, the paper said. Next Steps The next step for the project is to build and test out its system in a series of pilot programs. The use cases are spelled out as being either part of domestic payments, international payments, or government benefits and range from direct peer-to-peer -peer payments to issuing government aid in response to disasters. Several other countries exploring CBDCs have moved into pilots. Recently, the People's Bank of China began a trial with its CBDC with the Agricultural Bank of China. A handful of other central banks are running pilots for CBDCs. In the Caribbean, the Central Bank of the Bahamas and the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank have pilots up and running. Sweden and Uruguay's central banks are also currently developing or running pilots. Those of you that have been following me for a while, know that I have been waiting for this last article for a long time now. This tells me we are getting ever closer to that which we seek. As for the time arrays given in this article implementing that it will take time blah blah blah, keep in mind that Mr. Giancarlo also stated just weeks before launching the digital dollar project, that he had no intention of pursuing a digital dollar, that there was no need for any such thing. Watch what they are doing, not what they are saying. For those of you that would like to read the 50 page white paper in its entirety, and I highly recommend that you do, as it will be affecting every one of us in the very near future, I posted it on my blog page this morning. We are heading towards the digitization and tokenization of all assets worldwide. This is not just an opinion, it is a fact. The total process of digitization will take approximately 10 years. When you get a chance Google, the Internet of Value, and the Internet of Things, you will learn a lot. Like subscribe and share to help support the channel. Don't forget to save the link to my channel on the library platform and check out the Denarian blog, Facebook and Twitter as I post important daily updates on these platforms throughout the day as well. The links to these and other invaluable sites are in the description box below. Knowledge is power. Using that knowledge is powerful. Over and out for now, the Denarian.